Max Verstappen and Red Bull Racing have crucial weeks ahead of them. To hold Lando Norris at bay in the race for the Drivers' World Championship, important points must be earned in the upcoming Grands Prix. Given McLaren and Red Bull's current condition, this will be a difficult assignment. Much hinges on the changes made by the Austrian team for the US Grand Prix, and they will be bringing some huge upgrades to the Austin Grand Prix. The Formula One season concludes in Abu Dhabi in six races, with Max Verstappen and Lando Norris vying for the driver's title. After winning in Singapore, Norris lowered Verstappen's lead to 52 points, leaving 180 points on the table for the last six races, which include three sprint events. It is a little gap, but it provides Verstappen with a comfortable buffer to win his fourth world title in a row. But Red Bull need to improve, otherwise Verstappen will be a sitting duck. Given the close race, it is critical to understand what Red Bull can do to ensure adequate competitiveness from the RB20, which showed signs of recovery in Azerbaijan with Sergio Perez and Verstappen in Singapore, though this was due to track conditions and layout rather than a shift in the machine's competitive state. For starters, it is important to acknowledge the changes in performance and technological pecking order of cars throughout the field in 2024. The unique characteristics of the RB20 in particular, winning seven of the first 10 races but none of the following eight as its form plummeted, should not be underestimated. It is a shift in fortune that, even after several years, cannot be replicated. Over the summer, it was stated that the RB20 concept had taken an incorrect development path, leading Milton Keynes engineers down the wrong road, and that is where things went further down south for Red Bull. The RB20 had major issues with car dynamics and aerodynamic balance, and the new floor debuted at Silverstone demonstrated that the machine was unresponsive to any change at the time, alarming the squad furthermore that something was seriously wrong. By shifting the center of aerodynamic pressure to the front area of the floor, the evolution to the outer region of the floor should have alleviated the driver's ever-increasing understeer. However, as was also evident in Hungary, the difficulties got worse rather than reduced to the level shown in the Austrian GP. This shows that Red Bull saw the scope of the problem in Hungary and launched a backward investigation to see where the correlation between wind tunnel and CFD data and on-track information started to show up. The first tangible outcome of this effort was the reworked diffuser introduced in Baku, which regulated the pressure of the outgoing air and made the rear of the car more stable, particularly in low downforce configurations. But it was only the first step, which gives us a clear indication of the remedial measures we may expect when F1 gets in Austin. However, these weren't the only steps Red Bull took. Now Red Bull has fully focused on delivering a car in Austin that will be able to at least challenge for wins again. So, as the Red Bull RB20 has so many aerodynamic problems at the moment, Red Bull's corrective components for the US Grand Prix can only be aerodynamic in nature. It is just not possible to make any substantial improvements to the cooling system or suspension kinematics in the little time left until the Austin race on October 20th. The budget cap's strict constraints also impede the team's progress. The team's overarching goal, after identifying the main flaws with the RB20, was to merely reduce them and allow Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez to restore feeling and trust in the car's behavior. As said, the car's faults have increasingly gotten worse, with worries about chronic understeer and instability between the front and rear axles in high-speed corners. However, Red Bull's huge Austin upgrades and updates will include reviewing the front area of the floor to adjust the pressure below the initial section of the Venturi channels. This follows the introduction of the bulged diffuser in Azerbaijan. It's difficult to fathom how the curvature of the flow diverters and wake turbulence control may be improved, but these will be the most significant adjustments. A redesigned front wing architecture is also planned, allowing the team to take use of the element's flexibility, as Ferrari did in Singapore, but with the goal of not only enhancing performance. In theory, the designed flexibility of the front wing profiles will allow for high flap incidences, resulting in increased load at low speeds and less understeer through bends. These would be plausible answers to particular and limited difficulties, at least on paper, 
but they cannot be viewed as solutions capable of entirely changing the behavior of the RB20. It is therefore correct to claim that the success of these upgrades will be measured solely by feedback from the drivers, particularly Verstappen, who will have to rediscover the feeling that usually puts him in an exclusive comfort zone with the car, and which Perez was unable to replicate. Verstappen and Red Bull need these upgrades to keep up their 52-point advantage over Lando Norris in the F1 Drivers' Championship. So, in summary, Red Bull will be rocking up in Austin with a revised RB20 floor and new, flexible front wing structures. The floor will be altered at the front section, particularly near the flow diverters but the side edge of the floor will be the most important improvement in managing turbulence towards the rear. And the other component of the package that will be unveiled in Austin is a redesigned structure with improved assembly flexibility. So, aside from an improved floor, Red Bull plans to tweak the RB20's front wing in Austin. Overall, these modifications should help Verstappen and partner Sergio Perez to get better performance out of their vehicles right away. Red Bull cannot afford for these improvements to fall short of expectations as the season comes to a finish and the funding is limited. A lot depends on the improvements. The team's boss points out that Red Bull is not the only team providing updates. Ferrari is apparently preparing a package of improvements, while McLaren and Mercedes will also make changes. We want to build on the understanding since Monza and take a car that is well balanced between both of its axles. That inspires the confidence of the driver, Horner said, who also pointed out that the track has been resurfaced and there is a sprint weekend. We have to hit the ground running, but the team has been working incredibly hard on understanding the issues and hopefully getting remedies on the car for Austin. Another disadvantage for Red Bull is that the team won the Constructors' World Championship last season and was still in first place when the most recent wind tunnel hours were taken into account. As a result, Red Bull has the shortest amount of development time. There is a handicap system. And cost cap, you have to think very carefully about where you are going to apply your money. You need to have bang for buck. Gone are the days when you keep throwing different solutions at things. You cannot afford to do that. You have to be selective in what you hit the production button on," Horner said. So, it will be interesting to see if Red Bull will actually be able to come close to McLaren again in a couple of weeks. What are your thoughts on the upgrades? Will Red Bull see an amazing uplift in aerodynamic performance now that they're switching over to the flexi-like wing parts? Or will it turn out to be a gimmick after all? And if it turns out to be a good upgrade, will Verstappen be able to hold back Norris? And maybe just maybe, can Red Bull fight for the Constructors' Championship again? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below.